RobinReaction.com. In this video, I'm going to go over how to assign oxidation numbers. For all these problems, all we have to do is know this little grid right here. If you have the grid or if you've memorized it, you can find oxidation numbers. It's just a matter of following these rules. It's going to depend on your individual class if you're going to be given these rules or if you're expected to memorize them. I would say the standard for these rules are usually that you have to memorize them. It's pretty rare that you'd be given this on a test. So let's go ahead and do all of these examples. So starting with rule number one, all elements in their natural state, which just means uncombined, have an oxidation number of zero. So our first few examples are all like that. When oxygen is in its uncombined state, it exists as O2. So each oxygen in this molecule would have an oxidation number of zero. Next, S8, sulfur, uncombined, it's just by itself. Then it would also have an oxidation number of zero. And N2, same thing. When nitrogen is uncombined, when it's just by itself, it appears as N2, and so its oxidation number for both nitrogens would be zero. Now let's go ahead and go to rule number two. So all monatomic ions are just equal to their charge. So remember that mono just means one, atomic is just talking about one atom, an ion is saying that it has a charge. So this just means when it's an ion that only has one atom, you just look at the charge, and that's what the oxidation number is. So if we have Cl minus, we know the minus actually stands for minus one. So the oxidation number of this chlorine is minus one. And here we have a transition metal, silver two plus. Again, it's only one atom, it's just the silver. We look at the charge, it says two plus. The oxidation number of silver is just two plus. All right, so rule number three, talking about hydrogen. In almost every example, hydrogen has an oxidation number of plus one. So in this example, hydrogen is going to have an oxidation number of plus one. And now to get the oxidation number of nitrogen, we're going to go down to rule number 10. And we know that the sum of oxidation numbers in a compound adds up to zero. So basically, NH3 has no charge. Its overall charge is zero. So now we can set up a bit of a math problem. So we know that we have three positive ones. A plus one is coming from each hydrogen. So the total positive charge for this molecule is plus three. But we know that overall it ends up being zero because of rule number 10. So if we add plus three to some number, how do we get zero? So the only thing that's going to fit is negative three which means that this nitrogen is negative three. So when you start to do molecules, what you want to do is find all the different elements that have a set oxidation number rule, and then do those first, and then you kind of figure out the rest just by adding up the math. So now let's do rule number four, the hydrogen exception. When hydrogen is in hydrides, so things like sodium, magnesium, we're talking about the first or second columns in the periodic table are bonded with hydrogen, hydrogen becomes negative one. So because this is with lithium right here, lithium is going to create a hydride with hydrogen, and so we're going to have a negative one for that hydrogen. And that's a rule because these elements in the first two columns in the periodic table, they want to be positive so badly, they're going to override hydrogen's preference to be positive because these are metals with only one or two valence electrons and they strongly, strongly, strongly want to lose those valence electrons. So this means once we have this, we can go ahead and do our little bit of math. So once again, following rule number 10, we know that the sum of oxidation numbers in a compound is zero. So we know whatever hydrogen's oxidation number is plus lithium's oxidation number equals zero. We know that hydrogen is negative one. So the only thing that lithium can be is positive one. So that's the oxidation number for lithium. All right, so now let's go ahead and do, another way we could have done that is to say, okay, lithium is a group one element and that means that its charge is going to be plus one. So now going ahead and doing rule number five, which is oxygen. Oxygen is going to have an oxidation number of negative two in almost all circumstances. So let's go ahead and look at our next examples and start doing our little math equations to figure out the oxidation numbers of all the elements. So we know oxygen is going to be negative two. So our math for this equation looks like this. We're going to have two arsenics plus the five oxygens 
and we have no charge for this molecule, so the total is zero. So each oxygen has a negative two, that's going to add up to a total of a negative 10. And so that means the only thing that's going to fit in these two boxes is plus five plus five, because we want to cancel out the negative 10 with a positive 10. And we would never say that like one arsenic is plus two and the other is plus eight. They're always going to be the exact same in a molecule. So anytime you have two or more of the same type of element in one molecule, they're all gonna have the same oxidation number. So now moving along and doing HNO3. So we know this is not a hydride. H is gonna be plus one and O is gonna be minus two. So now let's make our little math equation for this. So we have H plus one. We have three oxygens. Each one is minus two. And then we're gonna have one nitrogen and we know our total adds up to zero. So let's see, we have plus one. From here, we have negative six. So the only thing that's going to cancel out and get us to zero is a plus five here. All right, and our next example is actually running into rule number six, which is the oxygen exception. When oxygen is in peroxides, it's going to have a charge of negative one. And so a lot of students are confused. They wanna look at oxygen when it has more than one and say, uh-oh, is that a peroxide? Don't worry about that. Peroxides are specifically H2O2. That is going to be the exception in 98% of any molecules that are using this oxygen exception rule. So if it doesn't look like H2O2, chances are it's just a regular oxygen rule. So in this case, we know each oxygen is minus one. And so just checking our math, we're going to have two hydrogens plus two oxygens each oxygen is minus one in this case. We know our total is zero. And so plus one, plus one, that checks out. We know our hydrogen is going to have a positive charge. So now let's go ahead and do rule number 11, which states that the sum of oxidation numbers in a polyatomic ion is equal to the charge of the ion. So we actually are going to use our same technique of doing little math formulas we're just going to have it equal things that aren't zero. So over here with our Cr2, O7, 2 minus, we're still gonna have our two chromiums. We're going to have our seven oxygens. And our total is going to equal negative two because we have the negative two right here. So now plugging in, we know oxygen is going to be minus two which gives us a total negative charge of minus 14. And we know we want the total to be negative two, so our positive charge should add up to positive 12. And so the only number we can fit in both boxes is plus six, plus six. So chromium becomes plus six, oxygen is negative two. So next example, once again, we have our two sulfurs, we have our three oxygens. We know that our total is going to be negative two. So plugging in, our negative charge is negative six, which means we want our positive charge to be positive four. That gets us to negative two. So each sulfur has gotta be plus two. All right, and last, we are using rule number nine, which says all halogens are negative one. And besides that, it's the same as the other examples we've done. So we know our total is negative one from this negative sign right here. We're going to have one phosphorus, and then we're going to have six chlorines. Each chlorine is negative one, which makes us have a total charge of negative six for the chlorines. So the only thing that's going to cancel out is a plus five, so that's what phosphorus is. All right, hope this video helped you learn how to assign oxidation numbers. As long as you follow these rules, you'll be able to do these problems. It's just a matter of doing a little bit of algebra sometimes to figure out all the different numbers. All right, good luck and happy studying. Hey, I hope you liked that video. Please feel free to like, comment, or subscribe. And if you go to my website, I have a ton of free practice problems you can check out. And if you need even more help, you can hire me for one-on-one -on -one private tutoring sessions that are online. All right, thanks, that's it. Happy studying.